Before the video starts, I'm going to be doing a giveaway for the brand new Alien Hominid Invasion and Alien Hominid HD as a thank you for 5,000 subscribers. These will be in the form of Steam codes, so it is for PC only. To enter, all you have to do is make sure you're subscribed to the channel, like this video, and comment the word Hominid in this video. The winners will be announced on 6th of November at 6pm GMT time. These codes were provided by the Behemoth themselves, so thank you Behemoth and enjoy the video. The Alien in Castle Crushers has a really unique magic, so I want to see if you can beat Castle Crushers by only using the alien magic. No, no other, other reason. reason. But first, here are the rules of the run. We can only damage enemies using alien magic. We are not allowed to level defense, and we can use pets for this run. And back to the video. So the alien is the only character in Castle Crushers that cannot change his weapon. That means for the entire run, we are stuck with a level 1 weapon that has no stat buffs or critical bonuses. But at least it has fire, so what is the alien magic? Right, so getting straight into this run, we begin with having to defeat the... Barbarian. But it's too late. The kingdom's princesses are already being kidnapped. But do not worry, princesses, I will save you, eventually. After defeating the... Barbarian. I went to the pet nursery to pick up the cutest little guy. So the beholder will give us a plus four to magic, which increases our damage to a whopping 17. So after blasting... <laughs> our way through the barbarians. We face our first boss of the run. So just like the bow and arrow run, the most annoying thing about these boss fights are the smaller enemies that get in front of your shots. But with enough running around in circles, we are able to quickly defeat the first boss. And for the second boss of the run, it's obviously the barbarian boss. And once again, he's not too difficult. Moving into the thieves forest, and I don't think the thieves realize that we have technology. So the thieves stood no chance and we quickly moved on to the third boss of the run, that being the troll mother. And this is all starting to sound a little bit too familiar, almost a bit like deja vu. And who do you think would win? The troll mother and her babies living in the forest or... Oh, how the tables have turned. Oh no, turn them back, turn them back. Phew, thank God for the river down below. Oh, hey, is that a dancing fish? So the only annoying thing in the river are the bats because for some reason they just have the wonkiest hitboxes when it comes to projectiles. Where do you think the bat's hitbox is? Is it A, the bat itself? B, slightly above the bat? C, right next to the bat? Or D, way off to the left of the screen? If you chose D, then you are correct. So for some reason, we have to shoot to the left of the screen and that hits the bats. So after lighting up Casper, we could finally move on to the catfish boss fight. So at this point in the run, we can only shoot our alien blaster three times per magic bar. And catfish only has small damage windows. This meant the fight was a lot of waiting around for the damage window, then only being able to get a few shots off. So for most of the fight, I had my shield held up just blocking damage and wait, alien, is, is that a grenade? <laughs> So in the tall grassy fields we can find these bears living in the nature and of course we got to give them a taste of that America. So after coming and freeing the land we eventually move up to a cave and find two of the princesses being taken by these mysterious figures. So we made it here a little bit too late and just missed them. So I took my frustrations out on Peepistrello. Wait no Peepistrello no I'm sorry I'm sorry please. Next was the flower of fields where we killed these innocent bees but thank god there's no lawyer bees am I right? And in the wedding crash, everything was going really well, so surely nothing could go wrong. And for the groom boss fight, it was extremely easy since we could literally keep him on the floor and keep shooting. Except he decided he wanted to escape death. Like, like, look at his health bar, there's, there's nothing there. And for the carriage section of the game, the boss itself was extremely easy. But the problem was, the thieves kept standing in front of me to block the shot, or standing behind me and shooting me. Which made this boss far more tedious than it needed to be. And I wasn't paying attention to my health bar, and I actually did die on the carriage boss fight. FBI, open up! We eventually got into the Cyclops boss fight and it actually wasn't too bad. Just as long as no one trips into this open grave of lava. Oh for God's sake Cyclops. Next is Lava World and wait. Nice. So the alien splash magic is considered explosive damage, meaning that the fire demons have a large resistance to them. But luckily the alien's projectile magic isn't explosive so we're all good. 
But what's not good is dying straight away. So even though we can actually do damage this time, the fire demons still pack a punch. That and having literally zero defense does not help at all. So we went back to the pet nursery and picked up install ball, regarded as one of the best pets in castle crushers. Just look at that 5 damage. Now install ball carried us to about halfway through lava world until we died again. So we gave lava world another go and at this point we'd unlocked our aerial projectile magic. And even though it's the exact same as our normal projectile magic, it actually allows us to shoot whilst being on the move. On this run we made it all the way to the first boss of lava world, that being the volcano. Now the volcano is a gimmick boss as you can only damage it by using the sandwiches. But like the Bomoni run we are able to shoot a splash magic at the volcano and then eat a sandwich straight away. This gives us a pitiful amount of damage. It is possible on paper but in practice it would take a very long time. But at least we got to see buff alien. For the dragon boss fight we actually found a really OP spot. This spot allowed us to hit the dragon with our projectile magic but it also made it to where the falling rock couldn't hit us. So all I had to do was stand here and spam my projectile magic. So after an easy victory we grabbed our first relic. So industrial Castle is definitely one of the harder parts of the game but their resistance to explosive and fire damage is nowhere near as bad as the fire demons. Making the industrial castle extremely easy for the alien. But the industrial castle does house one of the hardest enemies in all of the challenge runs we do. The brute. So let's see how he is in this challenge run. Yeah, so the alien's magic is extremely good against beefies. And for the industrial machine, a range build really excels here. Since you're stuck in this middle area, it's kinda hard to melee the fingers. But with an alien blaster, it was extremely easy. And it was at that point in the run where I let my chat decide the fate of the industrial prince. Yeah, most of you guys are evil. But with the industrial prince defeated, we are able to get the final relic and go across the ocean. I sure do hope we don't get attacked by any pirate ninjas. <laughs> Next was the desert area and if you know, you know. I really hate this place, brothers take me away. Inside the alien ship we broke free from prison and got to the main control deck. I then proceeded to alien hominid all over the place until all the enemies were dead. And it was at this point in the run where we made an amazing discovery. The aliens have butt cheeks. We eventually made it to the beach volleyball where we found out that the volleyball was invincible. So we did have to melee to hit the ball. Although I'm not the one cheating, just, just look at this. Moving on to the marsh level and at this point we could fire our blaster quite a few times. Which made it extremely easy against these beefy skeletons. And as long as the enemies don't have a damage resistance to fire or explosive, we were just melting them. We had a round 2 with a troll mother and she's dead. Next was the corn boss fight and as usual, it wasn't fun. We got the peasants to join in on the fight just to speed it up a little bit, but we did actually find out that the alien splash magic can damage through the corn boss's in run ability. It didn't help much, but hey, pretty cool. For Medusa's temple, we were hitting the fish people for 83 damage, so it didn't take long until we got to the Medusa boss fight. No, no, don't you dare comment that. No, 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 scroll back up to the video. But hit the like and subscribe button while you're down there. We defeated Medusa, yay, ha, <laughs> moving on. At this point, we had unlocked the alien's jump magic and it's a little bit bright. But we were able to successfully pull off a ladder strap for this run. So we can, um, we, we can move on to the, the next, next part of the, the game. For the ice section of the game, the enemies were extremely easy. But what wasn't easy was the ice barriers. These things took an entire magic bar plus one just to destroy. So the hardest part of this level was just destroying the ice. For the Frost King, we were hitting for 71 damage, which was pretty good. Plus, since we had range, it actually wasn't that bad of a fight. So after a little bit, the Frost King fell. So if you watch my Bomorny run, then you will know that this place is a nightmare. The cult minions have a 100% damage resistance to all elements. That means the alien splash magic does only one damage to the cult minions. But truly, truly, thank you behemoth, that the alien's projectile magic does not do explosive damage meaning we were not going to spend hours on this section again so the first of the four bosses is the painter boss fight and this actually wasn't too bad we did a lot of range damage meaning we could destroy the paintings without having to take damage 
meaning we could save our potions for the other three bosses and defeat the painter boss without really any problems. So after defeating the painter boss fight, we went to the crystal room, destroyed the crystal and moved on to the next boss. Is what I wish I could say. That's because my chat trolled me to go back into the painter boss fight. With the promise of a hidden easter egg, I went back into the painter boss fight and at that point, my fate was sealed. The painter boss respawned and I had to redo the fight all over again and it even costed me an extra potion. So after defeating the painter for a second time, I moved on to the second boss with one less potion. For the undead cyclops, we once again just abused PP Grandstrap. <laughs> yeah, we were hitting for 71 damage, so it didn't take long. Two down, two to go. So the third boss is the Necromancer, which always seems to be the make or break of these challenge runs. We either complete it without that much difficulty, or we spend hours of suffering on this boss. And after dying on our first attempt, it wasn't looking good. So the problem with the Necromancer, apart from it being a lot of enemies, is that all of the enemies are very different to each other. So we obviously have the Brutes who are bigger and can throw you. We have a Fire Demon who has resistance to our splash magic. And we have someone like the Conehead who throws bombs and can't be known normal juggled. So there are a lot of enemies but they're all just so awkward to each other. Luckily our splash magic is extremely effective against the beefies. On top of that, our splash magic also has a decent blast radius, meaning when we hit the smaller enemies it would more than likely hit others too. This resulted in a lot of magic spam and after a little bit we defeated all of the enemies. Let's see how the necromancer himself fares. Uh huh. So the Necromancer couldn't even stand up, meaning three bosses down, one to go. For the first phase of the final boss, we wanted all of the crystals to bunch together so we could do this. And after defeating the final crystal, we moved on to the second phase. For the second phase, we did this. For the third phase, he was in the air so we couldn't spam our splash magic, but you know what we could spam? Our rare projectile. For the fourth phase, he's in the air again, just more spidery. So you know what we did? Spammed our aerial projectile. <sighs> For the fifth phase, we spammed our aerial projectile. Oh, 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 God, where am I? Oh, yeah. For the sixth phase, we spammed both our splash magic and aerial projectile magic. And with that, the evil wizard was defeated. The temple began to crumble, so we landed on the crystal, caught the princess, and rode it all the way back to the castle. And that was beating castle crashes using only alien magic. A very fun challenge run that actually wasn't that bad. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.